maybe a third gear pull and see if we're gonna drop voltage. Oh, here we are again. On today's episode, we have a 2011 370Z with a non-charging battery. So it randomly turned off in traffic and wouldn't start again. We used jumper cables to restart it and that then worked for around two minutes until it died again. So that sort of leans towards it not being the battery, more of it being the alternator, because if you have a dead battery uh, and your alternator is fine, the car should stay running until you turn it off, then it just won't restart. But with a regularly working alternator, the car should stay running once it's started. So uh, the nice thing about a 370 is that they have a voltmeter built in where we can see what the charging voltage is when the car is on, uh, which gives us an indicator. So with the car off, the battery should show around 12 to 12.5 volts. With the car on, the alternator should be charging it between 13.5 and 14 and a half volts. So let's start the car up and see what it shows. Give it a little start. So here's our voltmeter. And as we can see, uh, we're at 12 volts which tells us that the alternator is not charging the battery uh, because normally we should be sitting at the 14 volt mark. So let's take a look under the hood and see if there's maybe any loose connection, any loose wiring, um, and see if we can troubleshoot the issue. So we're gonna open the bonnet and here we have our six cylinder 3.7 liter I believe it's a VQ37 is the engine code. Uh, and our battery is situated back here. Uh, what we can do is while the car is running, we'll put across an external voltmeter and just ensure that the reading inside the car is actually correct. Um, and then follow down the wiring all the way to the alternator. There we go. So that, that's the coding on the alternator. And we'll just check that the wiring isn't grounding out anywhere, uh, that the connection on both sides of the alternator and the battery terminal are tight. The only thing left to do, if that shows no problems, is to remove the alternator, bring it to a shop, get it tested, and see if that's the issue. So we've set up our voltmeter here on alternating current. AC will start the car. And just make sure that we get the same reading across the voltmeter as we do to the gauge inside here. So, we've got 12 volts, the battery, we've got also 12.6. So that definitely means that the alternator is not sending any voltage to the battery in order to keep it charging. And as you can see, it's fluctuating. So next up, we'll get onto the car. Power wire from the alternator to the battery is connected and it's not loose. Uh, that the regulator is also plugged in, which is built in into these alternators. And we'll go from there. Just to make sure that we disconnect the battery, just in case we do wiggle some power wires, we don't create any shorts. So our alternator is positioned right here on the passenger side, on the front of the engine. Um, Quite difficult to see, but we have our, so this will be our power wire to the battery. You can see that. So as we can tell, that's, that's pretty tight, pretty firm. And then the second thing would be the regulator being plugged in here. And that plug is also connected. So only thing left to do now is to remove the alternator, bring it to a shop, get it tested or We'll just have to replace it. So first up, we removed the airbox, which was just undoing one 10 millimeter bolt and this hose clamp in order to lift out the airbox. So that took a bit of wiggling to get out, but pretty straightforward. We just disconnect the uh, basically fan controller and there's one, two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts on each side and then just one, uh, I believe that's a power steering cooling line or maybe an uh, engine cooler or a transmission cooler line that is clipped into these. So instead of forcing it out, just make sure you reach from underneath and just wiggle them out. So whew, now 
we've got plenty of access to our tensioner, which is this. And then we can undo all those alternator bolts. So let's undo this first. That we have to put into the tensioner and get our wrench. And we can now hopefully take off the tension as you can see. So once we rotate this anti-clockwise, we can pry the belt off the alternator. There we go. 12 millimeter bolts. So we've got one, two, three, and I'm not sure if there's one behind the tensioner. We'll take a look now. So I would recommend wearing gloves when you do this because uh, it gets quite dirty, especially if your car has an oil leak, which this one does, and that builds up all over the place. <laughs> so yeah, your hands become properly filthy. Right. So in the end, did have to uh, remove the, which was a 14 millimeter bolt right there. And then what sits behind that in this small little groove is another 14 millimeter bolt. That is the top bolt of the alternator. So there's actually only two bolts that hold it on. Uh, I then struggled with removing this rear clip. What we're gonna try and do is hopefully we go this out without having to remove the stabilize the bar but i'm sure we will have enough space like so there we have it that would be the number that you give him for anyone who's wondering so just to make the installation process a bit more pleasing we're going to use this puff max multi-purple engine degreaser and just get it all in there so that way when we stop putting the thing back together we've got a clean more space so let that soak for a couple of minutes we uh managed to source ourselves a second hand replacement alternator. That would be the quickest way to get this car back on the road again. And as we can see here, <laughs> I mean, it's quite obvious that this alternator will not produce any electricity. Uh, this might've been caused by the intense valve cover oil leak. And since this sits below the valve covers, uh, oil might have been slowly just filling up and then caking the uh, the cold's closed. So this would definitely stop any sort of connection to be made between the brushes and the uh, outer coils themselves. Um, we could potentially try and clean them and throw back in, but now we've got ourselves uh, a replacement. And the benefit of this is actually that it came with a connector and we know that our connector actually has cracked and is broken. So we're gonna cut this off, resplice it back on, put some heat shrink, and then start the reinstall. Let's feed this back in. From the bottom. Make sure we clear those cooling lines. Quite difficult on hand. Yeah. Okay. Then we're gonna put the bolt back in that lines it up behind the tensioner which is there, and then we got this bracket to go on the bottom. So let me just do that. So we've got it mounted back in, two 12 millimeter bolts here, one 14 millimeter bolt there. Then don't forget to reconnect the oil temperature, oil pressure and oil temperature sensor. And on the rear of the alternator, we have one 12 millimeter nut, the power wire, and then the connector, which we can't see now, but just remember to connect those properly and push them in until they click. So they are secured. Now we'll get the tensioner back in, put the belt back on, close up the intakes, and we should be good. Just make for sure that you realign this pin to the hole in the block, and it should sit flush. Get that back in. Pin. Make sure it lines up with the pin. Okay, so we've got that. So now we'll put on the uh, the belt, I'm gonna put a picture of the routing up for you now. Allen key will work, uh, and then it will lock in place. So it allows us to basically put the belt on without having to use multiple hands. So there we go, that is pre -tension. Now we can follow the diagram and route this all back over. 
without having to worry about the tensioner. Fold the shroud uh, the same way that we removed it. Then we'll take the shroud off and we'll show you how to remove the shroud. So we've got the two 10mm bolts up here that hold the fan shroud in. We're going to tighten those. A couple of plastic connectors that basically just help with the orientation. Perfect. So that's connected, that's tightened. All good. Now we've got our coolant overflow tank. So dropped back down, reconnected the battery. Now it's time to start her up and see if we're charging. So we've got power, that's a good sign. And what we wanna see is that once we start the car, which is still off, that, that gauge goes up to 14. Fingers crossed. So I thought I'd let my facial expression uh, gauge whether this has been a success or a failure. <laughs> so let's start it up. Checks the gauges and we've got more than 14 volts. There we go. Look at that. So I guess it's, it's quite a lot higher now uh, just because the battery has been drained a couple of times due to its used a bad alternator previously but uh we'll take it for a test drive now and see whether it manages to hold that charge here we are out on our test drive and it seems like we've been quite successful we've not had any drop in voltage even with the lights on ac on radio on it seems to be holding steady at a good what is that 14.25 volts so uh i think this this good old alternator exchange slash swap has been successful. Let's see, because the car did feel quite sluggish before, so we might do a little pull here, uh, just to see, has it potentially picked up a bit of power due to the extra volts? I guess we'll find out. Well, before we do any sort of hard acceleration, engine oil temperature is up to operating temperature. We'll see if under full load, we're able to still attain the charging voltage because sometimes with a higher load, uh, the cars tend to, or well, the alternator in that case, tends to lose some, some voltages. So we'll just make sure that at high RPMs, we still maintain the 14 volts. Well, as long as it stays above 13 and a half, I think we're good. Now that we've got some warmth in the, in the engine, we'll switch over to manual mode, downshift, uh, do maybe a third gear pull and see if we're going to drop voltage. So we're just going to roll into it and forth and just make sure we maintain those 14 volts. Yep. Seems good. I think we can say that that was a success. Do a cheeky little first gear. Doing good! So we were successful. Um, car's charging again, drives fine. Uh, it's been a couple of days now since I did the alternator replacement and have not had any issues since. So I hope this has helped you. Uh, in case you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below.